What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing. In today's video, we're gonna show you some highlights from the very first detailing workshop ever. So guys, Gabe Fletcher from Total Detailing drove all the way from Pennsylvania and spent the entire day here in the detailing workshop. Now, what did we go over? A ton of stuff. He really wanted to refine his paint enhancement and paint correction skills, as well as talk about the business of detailing, the detailer's dilemma, how far to go, when to say no, when to stop. A lot of information was covered that day. So if you are interested in one-on-one -on -one, hands on training, check out the detailingworkshop.com and contact us there. We'll be able to schedule either one day or up to five days of training, depending on what you want to learn. We have tons of products and tools right here in the shop so that you can really get hands on training and practice in many different avenues of detailing. Getting that one-on-one -on -one training is really beneficial. If you can learn in a classroom setting with many different instructors and people, that's great. That also has its place in training. In fact, we are part of the detailing clinic from Chicago Auto Pros, and we love teaching and instructing in that setting. And going there for training is spectacular. But if you want to really hone your skills and just spend the day on one certain thing or a few certain things, then that's where the detailing workshop really shines, pun intended. You can spend the entire day or many days focusing on what you want to learn. So enjoy some of the highlights from the first detailing workshop. Yeah, I mean, even the color, the yeah. color of the vehicle pops out. Boom. Yeah, yeah. and th this will drive you nuts because if you're looking through your camera and trying to get before and afters, mm -hmm. man, you can really see that difference. It'll drive you nuts. So what's your usual go-to when you were, if you were gonna finish this down, do you usually use the orange or do you usually use something else? I probably use the orange. Okay, because look how it, it came out so, so nice. If you're, if you're using that, that same technique. There might be just a little bit more hazing here versus this, just the, and it's just barely noticeable. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see a little bit. Yep. Actually, there's like a weird line here because I didn't finish properly with the line there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you can see the, the the richness and the color here. And yeah. a little bit hazier here. Yeah. Yeah, when you go back and forth, you can really see the dramatic. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, when you see that, it's usually just a pad, so you would have to go, I mean, paint enhancement, this is what I would live with. That's as far as you want to go with this anymore if you're stepping into paint correction territory. But I mean, you see the difference from here to here, it's, it's still pretty dramatic.
So again, just out of curiosity, let's do an IPA wipe down and see what it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think down here. Oh, you know what that is? That's the edge of the dry pad. Okay. It's like dry buffing. The edge of the dry pad. Yeah. So in that case, I would just you know hit this down. Just take the residue. Yeah. With and, what's on here? Yep. Yep. But the majority is nice and clear. And look, you got the rest of those nasty, huge swirls out. Yeah. You just have that light scratch there, and that's livable. That you can deal with. Um, a piece of advice I'd give yeah, myself. Yeah. If, you, if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice from when you started detailing earlier, mm. what would it be? I guess I would have to say I did a lot of research anyway, but research is important, but uh, don't believe everything. Don't believe everything. I guess with everything, you know, anything sales and anything services, you're going to run into hype and people saying, this is the best, this is the best, this is how you should do it, this is how you're not supposed to do it. Take all that in and, and, and process it and keep it in the back of your mind and start with your, your process. You know, I learned a lot of stuff from the forums and that's great, but that's all, you know, reading. You, you don't see, you see pictures, but not a lot of video. So YouTube is great for that now because you can see people doing things. Um, but do the research, find out what people say about something, and then try it for yourself. See if it works. If it works, great, run with it. If it doesn't quite work, then tweak it. Then you start tweaking it for yourself. So I have found that detailing is definitely very fluid and very subjective. So with products like 3D speed, a lot of people love it, and then you have your other high-end guys that would never touch it because they don't need to. It's not to say that it's a bad product, but it doesn't, you know, they just don't have a need for it, but they will badmouth it. Now that transitions into another subject. Mm. Uh, because I have found what works for me, it's, it's kind of my own technique. Like you will kind of develop your own way of doing things that works really, really well. And yeah, you follow a certain pattern at first because you're learning. So... Just like with, with polishing, the whole thing is, you know, you work in that small pattern, you do the whole cross hatching, and then, yeah, I mean, that's how you start. That's, that's the basics. And even when you see me doing it, I, I follow that. But then if I see or if I need to change something, I change it up on the fly, and I'll put a little bit more pressure and go slower here, or faster here, more pressure here. Or It looks haphazard, but it's not. It's your focusing in on something that maybe the watcher, the viewer is not seeing. So when they see you doing this, it looks all haphazard, but it's not. You're focusing in on something. You will develop your own kind of method when it comes to polishing, because that's the biggest thing. People have all these uh, crazy notions and ideas of how polishing should be, but there is no how it should be. Right. It's, it's what works. It's what you're getting with results. You draw the line and what's your typical formula Mm. for knowing where that line is going to be. Yeah. So as a professional and as a business, that's you're going to have to draw that line somewhere. If you're a detail enthusiast, you're doing it on the side, you're doing it for fun, they have no limit. They will go as far as they want to go, and they call that detailing, and it is detailing, but it's an enthusiast type of mindset where I, they just want to keep going and keep going and keep going to get it perfect. As a professional, as a business, you can't always do that and make a profit. How important is setting expectations with the customer as a beginner detailer? How, like, where mm -hmm. does that, where should that be in the process? Should it be the first? Should it be the last thing? You know, where, where does that, where does that fall in in the importance range? That should be. That's pretty important, especially if you're starting out as a business. I feel that's very, very important to learn how to 
uh, talk to the customer first. I'm gonna really try to focus with training on a, on a business end like that with customer service. I guess the line of questioning that would be good to start right away is, what are you expecting for the vehicle? And I know that's kind of a broad subject, that's kind of a broad way of saying it, but start with that. And the customer would be like, you know, okay, I, I just want the, I want the carpets to look better. I noticed the, the leather is dingy. You know, there's a lot of stuff in the cup holders and stuff. Okay, all right, good, we'll start with that. Then we start looking at the vehicle and kind of going it over with them, if that's possible, if they're there. And you look at the carpets, you look at the upholstery, and you, can, you will, over time, gauge it. You'll be able to know what can come out and what won't, at least to a certain degree, almost right away. But I'll start with that first. I'll be like, okay, so full paint correction, you know, if you want to go sealant or, or ceramic coating, it's X amount of dollars. But then, I'll, and I'll be brutally honest with them, and I'll say, like, I probably wouldn't recommend that if this is going to be your daily driver, because it's going to get swirled up again. But that's that price. Then let's go down to a paint enhancement. Now, that is um, the majority of what my customers like, because it's affordable, and it's quicker turnover, because you can get it done in a day, and... Uh, and you're gonna get amazing results. You know? So if you are interested in that one-on-one -on -one hands-on training, again, check out the detailingworkshop.com and you can sign up there. You can contact us and we'll be able to work with you, find a date that works for both of us, either one day or up to five days of training. And I do encourage those who want the training to contact us and let us know exactly what you want to learn. We'll really fine tune the curriculum just for you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And enjoy a ton of our other interior and exterior videos. Check out the playlist down below and at the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.